Icon 5 Invoker, um, let's go for your perspective. Where is your perspective? Here. So your com what is your comment of this game? You said, I left Dota 2 more than a year ago and just came back. I was ancient ranked before, but now I'm getting match up with Archons. I still make a few mistakes. Might be a bit more if an expert checks it out. It'll be uh, cool to know what you think. I'm still adjusting to the meta. There's huge gap now between uh, between how the game was played before and now. The game I chose to send was the one I did bad. The other games I had was smooth. Okay, I I actually prefer to have a replay where you did a bad performance because that means um, there, there's a lot of opportunity for you to learn. You committed more mistakes compared to winning the game. So yeah, this is actually good. Um, when it comes to the meta, the game itself is way, way higher when it comes to the tempo. Um, if the enemy is, um, if the enemy reach their timing, they will really pressure you and stop you from farming. Unlike before, that even if they reach, your, even if you reach your timing, your team will not play around you. They just reach their own timing, which is not happening anymore. So yeah. You, you may be stuck in the old ways when it comes to playing Dota 2. But uh, welcome back. Preview. So, uh, what's your plan in this game? Like, if you're going to play Axort in this particular game, um, I'm concerned about how can you land those Sun Strikes. Because the, the only setup that you have in here is Frostbite. And then Status trap on these techies and some predictions from you know where they're g gonna run and when it comes to the when, when it comes to the uh what you call this observer ward um uh, position you, you need to uh, put it wisely now because um if, if you if you play in here if, if you place it here on the top side of the river um, you, you you that means you're expecting the post five of the enemy or one of the heroes in the top lane to, to gank you to the mid lane because this is all about vision right to prevent the early ganks so here given by the uh, looking at their draft Medusa top and then one babysitter possibly the, the laning partner of the Medusa will not rotate to the mid lane so it will be much much better if you planted an observer ward in here because there's a possibility that the Phoenix will gank you or the Ogre will gank you. So yeah. And you, if you go for if you go for Wex, I actually think that Wex is much better here, better approach in here because um the, the enemy relied so much on mana. Like four of them. Of course, when it comes to Jug, he can easily spin off from the EMP, but the uh, but the other four guys in here, like Abaddon, Ogre, Phoenix, and especially Medusa, rely so much on mana. So Wex is going to be the game changer in here. And Takis is here. That means he is kind of um, contesting with your um, experience. So Jug will have like faster level 2 in here or not just level 2 but level 3 and 4 if you were not able to deny those creep way, uh, creeps but the good thing is that he's not able to get any last hits based on the stats in here 1-1-3-1 one, one, one. hmm excerpt build I I I'm hoping that you are going to play like Midas in this game because you're excerpt invoker after all. So I was really hoping that you would go for Midas. You don't even try to de Yeah, he's trying to deny it. Yep. He denied it. So you don't have a way of securing the range creeps. Since you're excerpt, you just rely on your right clicks. Denied again. You, you need to do a better job when it comes to the uh, last hitting. When it, especially for the range creeps. I mean, 
when it comes to the miller crypts it's fine you, you're able to get the assets in there but um there are times that you traded the range crypts over to the miller crypts something that you should um change and sending the uh forge spirit to get the water rune in there denied it okay but what about it i mean is it actually necessary to deny it like the juggernaut actually doesn't need it since you are not pressuring the juggernaut enough and it's actually just farming in here he far he farmed the uh the lane creep and then he go for the side lanes um at this pace of the game you'll be out farm and i think that's what happened in here yep you got out farmed by a juggernaut mid I don't know if he has some kills as well in there, but I just based on the graphs. We're going to uh, look at it here. Boots first item. Um, and then you're trying to set up kills in there. Like, if I were you, I'll focus on denying and then last hitting in the mid lane first. Or even uh, pressuring this Jug. Because Jug is a core as well. Their Ogre is kind of um, support based on how he move around the map and then how he uh, actually itemize in this lane in this game boots first item um i'm not sure about it what's the reasoning behind boots is it only to escape from the spin on the jog but he's not going to spin you if you're full hp which is happening for the longest time he will only spin you down if you're like being um being under tower and then getting hit by it so if you if you go for a spin like this like full hp you can actually kill this jug but yeah not enough damage yet it's it's actually in your favor as well because you have boss for the sustain and then you still have tango and then the jug needs to use the healing ward to restore his hp and yeah you you, you need to push out the lane now and then take care of the water rune because if you don't take the water runes you won't be able to sustain your mana although you have the uh, now for mana region but i don't think it's actually enough especially you are invoker yeah midas you're playing from below you should try to aggro creeps but yeah it's kind of dangerous because he has a spin and then it's level five you might even die look at the cs chart the good thing about juggernaut is that um, after he pushed the lane he will farm the sidelines he even uses spin just to clear the camps but you you're just content with with, with the lane creeps and this is one of the big reasons why you're getting out farm by this juggernaut and then you're you're even controlling the lane last hitting everything you're not even trying to push it missing mid he's back and then you're even missing some of the cs well i cannot blame you because you're a returning player you, you need to get used to it again omni slash that's a stupid way of using the ultimate he can still spin though uh move out your forge yep he will possibly die now no you don't want to commit if you actually if you actually commit in there Juggernaut is dead. If you actually stay closer in here, like move around with the jug, knowing that he doesn't have Omni Slash and then he doesn't have Blade Fury anymore, that means the only damage that he will deal is only right click. Right? But you, on the other hand, you've been right clicking him. Possibly you could throw the Cold Snap and then the um, Sun Strike in there. Although it's kind of low chance that he will stay in the uh sun strike but at least you try and possibly you will you will win the trade because you have the forge spirit as well which will um lower the armor of the enemy so that's a mess opportunity right there for the harassment or even get a kill so yeah what are you trying to do in here you're trying to rotate no just finish your just finish your my dust bro like you're so 
you'll not be able to do anything in here if you don't have Midas, especially you were talking about Axe Invoker. The skill build itself is not that good in this particular match, and then you're going to delay it, it's gonna be much worse. Um, get some Observer Ward here, just so you will not be gank while farming. So yeah, Jug is back, and then he will just spin. So look what happened in here. The Juggernaut pushes the lane and then farm. Well, you, you only play around here and possibly here again. No, 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 don't go here, bro. Yeah, this is not really good because you will, you already lose two creeps. Almost three. So yeah, two creeps. And then look at this Juggernaut, like the way that he is farming, this is... This is way too good for the Jug's farming pattern. Is this guy a smurf or what? Kind of smurf. Because uh, 400 matches and then Archon 5. And you even died. How did you die? Omni Slash? So he, sp he spun. And then you, you decided to go in here. Nah, you, you panic. You even have fairy fire in here as well. If you if you have that fairy fire in there, you can actually go for cold snap and then turn it around. Especially that tech is in there. If you just manage to use the fairy fire in there, he's dead. Very dead. I think you panic in there. But let, let's see it from your perspective. Yep, here. Alacrity running away. Forge spirit. Yeah, you, you did panic in there, especially when the bounce keeps going on you. You can actually go back to the creep, to, to the uh, melee creeps in there. They tied EG versus Beast Ghost. That's good to hear. I mean, I really like Beast Ghost than EG. So yeah, you're getting out CS and then. You are getting outplayed, but when it comes to the outplay, it's only by yourself because you panicked. Double damage and then just farm. Yeah, for sure. You can actually take the lane creeps first. Um, you you need to realize here. Preview that the lane creeps are dying while the neutrals are staying in their camps. So maybe you should uh, prioritize the lane creeps first over uh, the, the neutral creeps because they're still in there, right? They're not running away. So yeah, your farming pattern really needs to be improved. You have Midas now, but it's like 10 minutes Midas, which is not looking good. Mm, Juggernaut is missing, although he is not actually missing. Yeah, you, you... I cannot believe that Juggernaut is actually pushing the lane. Like, when it comes to the, when it comes to the skills that the Juggernaut can use, it's only two spells: spin and then. Omni Slash and also Healing Ward. Well, you you have a lot of things to do in this particular match, like even Cold Snap or Ghost Walk because you have Wex earlier. I guess you got overwhelmed. Last it, last it. Forge Spirit. You 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 you're going to feed your Forge Spirit. Yep, you just fed. So. The, the other the other lanes as, as well are getting stomped and since there's no stun although you managed to get a kill with a sun strike which is good that's the only help that you can provide to them like the occasional sun strikes because you're just gonna farm and the bird is here for uh, fire spirits My does Orchid. Yeah, go, go for Orchid. I, I like the build Orchid. But the problem with the Orchid is that... Um, I mean, not actually a problem, but you just need to properly use it when... 
the enemy doesn't have will not be able to dispel it because they have Abaddon support right you need to be uh, careful when it comes to the Abaddon's positioning that's the only um, dispel that they have at this point whereas um, Juggernaut Medusa you know they, they need some dispel first Manta style or even Yule Scepter on the Phoenix or the Ogre or even just going for Glimmer or Forest Staff it's actually enough to survive your onslaught TPing, it's kind of late though. Like you don't have stun, and you're playing Exort. It's not gonna easily happen. Sun Strike, almost. They're they're actually giving up now. Why? Is it because of your Invoker? Why he's giving up? Is he mad about your Invoker? Um, to be fair, if if I'm your if I'm one of your teammates, I will actually be mad at you. Like, the Juggernaut was able to uh, finish the tower, and then the Juggernaut is actually rotating. The Juggernaut is rotating more than you. Which is, you know, I cannot r really blame because he's really activated early on. Troll was toxic. Yeah, sure, he is toxic. But I think his rage is actually... I don't, I don't, I don't know exactly the reason why this troll is mad. Like he may be mad about the crystal maiden, or maybe about the Tekus pick. I don't know. But it is possible that he is mad about your invoker, or even the razor, because the uh, the juggernaut survived in there. So see it right here. Um, you have so many cores like invoker troll razor just farming and then the tech is not going to create immediate space because he's just gonna plant those bombs so this is one of the reason why i don't like the uh, excerpt build on invoker because it's it's too farm heavy and then it cannot create space if, if your team is actually losing you cannot do anything aside from the uh, sun strike but it needs some setups first even if you manage to land the tornado in there, since Abaddon is there, he will be able to um, sustain the ogre. If I were you, I'll just I'll push the lane, like the mid lane. It, it has the same concept though, because if you think about the uh, the draft of the enemy, especially for the Medusa, Medusa is just gonna farm in here, especially on the uh, ancient triangle, in here, because this. Ancient camps will give you the uh, most amount of golds and experience early on. Aside from even even killing uh, heroes, you know, this one will give you a lot of golds and um, experience. So if you maybe take the tier one mid, you can easily invade in here. Or I don't actually think that you can actually in invade it because of your of the draft, but at least you can pressure them by pushing the lanes. Like pushing the lanes into, uh, into their tier 2 tower and then force them to rotate and then you hide in the trees and then kill them. At least you will be able to force reaction. Because no one wants to see the creeps pushing down the lane. Someone has to clear it. Someone has to farm it. Yep, you're going, it, you're going at it now. Forge Spirit, Alacrity. Uh, fortified, okay. Go back first. Yep. So, um, if you, if you like the Invoker a lot, you, you need to ask yourself what kind of skilled build you're going for. Because when it comes to the Invoker, it, he's so versatile. Like, he can be the utility, he can be the, um, you know, kind of carry in the game. And then you just abandon the troll, which is, um, kind of okay decision. That you abandon the troll right there because you, there's there's nothing that you can do to save him. You're not something like Oracle or Dazzle. But here at this point, like you can actually aside from the Phoenix Blast in here, aside from the Phoenix Blast, what you can do in here is tell him to go back, tell him to get out. And aside from that, you can actually go for Tornado, Tornado. You can go for Tornado. You can go for Ice Wall. There's a lot of spells that you can throw in there, but you just gave up. Ice wall, even tornado, even EMP just to zone them out. 
there's a lot of spells that you can use even even the um chaos mature you know for zoning aside from the phoenix blast you can use those spells that i've mentioned to um to to break them up you know the troll is not listening to anyone on the game yeah but it's not an excuse that you just abandon him even if the troll is not listening, at least you you did something. You did something right. It's not about, you know, the, the, the troll being toxic or not. It's about your performance, my boy. This is what we're doing, right? We're doing uh, we're doing replay analysis. We're finding opportunities at your games and then improve them or, you know, finding the mistakes in your gameplay and then make sure that you understand that you committed mistake and then make sure that in the future you will not be able to um, commit those mistakes right so yeah even if the troll is toxic it's not an excuse for you not to perform I mean yeah sure you, you let the troll die in there but it's your carry after all Tom guy here, um, not too late, for sure. <laughs> You're listening to Muli. Nah, don't worry. This is still the uh, second replay analysis. The troll was just annoying. Yeah, for sure, you, he is really annoying. But me, watching your game, it's kind of annoying as well that you're not saving him, that you're not trying. It feels like you're, you're toxic as well. Bomb. <laughs> Techies. This is one of the reasons why I hate Techies. But yeah. Uh, again, it's not an excuse. That. Troll is toxic. If Troll is toxic and then you're getting annoyed by him. There's something that we call. Mute don't hesitate to mute people even if they are the safe lane even if they are support you know mute them if you think that they are um tilting you just go mute them why bother you, you need to control the things that you can control troll troll warlord is another player that you don't have a control over with but you the invoker you only have control for yourself as you said you're getting annoyed by this troll so how can you stop yourself from being from being annoyed by ignoring this guy or muting him because if you don't you'll you you'll be continued to be annoyed in this game and yeah your top net worth of the game but it doesn't feel like you know the the, the um the impact of your net worth it doesn't feel like it because you're just farming, the, the, the only fighting items that you have with your overall network is this, Orchid. That's the only item that you can actually play with, 3.5. But the problem with your Invoker gameplay here is that you farm too much. Even if you have the Orchid, you don't even try to take those fights. You are you're just reacting to them, you're just reacting to the enemy. EMP, but you don't have cold snap. You can actually go for the uh, chaos meter in there and a cold snap. I mean, yeah, you, you managed to kill the Phoenix, but it's not worth it because there's still the Medusa. Ice wall, uh huh. Alacrity, E. Okay. Okay. You, you have BKB, so why are you running away? They don't have any more spells. Um, why I said they don't have any more spells? Like, they, they use on the Ogre, right? And then Medusa doesn't have any more um, stone case. Juggernaut TP'd in there, but um, clearly he's not looking at you. He can spin and then um, slash, but you can try to go for the uh, Ghost Walk as well. But I think it's not going to be possible since there's Sentry in here. Yeah, it, it's fine. It's, it's still a decent fight, after all. So you're pushing the, you're pushing the lane in here aggressively. So Agonims on Medusa, are you going to fight? Yeah, you, you, you can actually go fight. 
You managed to catch the uh, phoenix. So I, I wonder why you're so afraid of. Mm -hmm. Farming again. TP, TP and then farm. I should push it by Forge Spirit, maybe? I mean, you already showed it yourself in bottom. Ghost Walk, okay. Cold Snap, EMP, but there's no damage. Yeah, finally, the damage is here. I mean, no need for EMP in there, right? You can just go for Cold Snap and then... Go for Chaos Mitra. Alacrity Chaos Mitra. You don't need the um, Ice Wall. Because it's still getting stunned by the... Um, what you call this? Um, cold Snap. But yeah, it's still fine. You, you managed to get a kill, but what happened after getting a kill? You did nothing. You just went back to farming. If I were you, after killing the hero... Um, push. Take this building out. Instead of going back in here and then farming and then now you're contesting, like three of you are contesting. You travel to top. But again, even if you took this fight, there's no objective that will be taken. You know? Because he already took the tier 2 top. Yeah, you, you use BKB, but for what? You don't have any spells on you. Healing Ward is still up. So, have you ever wondered why he's still not receiving any damage? Here, look at here. Healing ward is so important that you need to take it. Look at the healing of him. 106, and then your damage is like... 100, 100? But it's just being restored by healing ward. So this is how important it is to, to destroy the healing ward. All of your right clicks is nothing. Because of the healing ward. And then, yeah, you, good thing you managed to kill the phoenix egg. But that's it. So you, you committed your BKB just for a phoenix. And then actually, um, I could say that you lost the engagement on the top lane because Troll died and then CM died. And then you get nothing. Good thing about the Tekus is that he pushed the bottom. So this is actually a much better move for you to do early on. Instead of traveling to the top lane, and help the troll, just ignore him at that point because you're going to take the tier 1 bottom and then possibly pressure the tier 2 bottom as well and you know take advantage of the space that this troll is making not because he is like safe lane it doesn't mean that you know you always need to uh, to what you call this um, save him so he uses spin you can actually go but you're too afraid you have orchid brother you have Orchid. I don't know why you're, why you're so afraid. Like, you have Orchid in here. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Alacrity. Pressuring. TP is... I mean, Jug just TP'd. I mean, you know that it's Jug, right? Any spells that you're going to use is going to be dispelled by the spin. But after the spin, you can actually try to Orchid and then uh, force him to use the Manta style. But even if he use the Manta style, he still doesn't have spin. And Omni Slash because he used it earlier. And at that point, you can actually kill the Jog. But yeah, you're so afraid of this Jog in life. Good thing you're here, you will be able to kill the Medusa. Troll died as well in the process, and you're going to die as well, I think. Yep. Come on. Not worth it. You, you uh, lost the engagement again. Uh, not anymore. Because Razor is gonna clean them up. Phoenix is still here. Phoenix is gonna die, I think. He doesn't have... He don't TP, so he'll get run down by Razor. Talk too much. <laughs> We're actually winning the winning the game even without the tech is. I mean even the troll is trolling. So he used Mantle style. Go! 
Nah, I still don't want to go. Still don't want to commit. Jug died. Tech is. Uh, Abaddon. Abaddon is dead. Ogre here. Do you really want to play bottom? If I were you, I'll go play around the outpost on the top and then go for Roshan. It's way better that point, uh, at that time. Or in, in this time, it's actually way better than taking the tier 2 bottom. Because it's only push. It's only tower. But having Roshan and then second life on one of your core, let's say Troll Warlord or your Invoker, it's actually a game changer. Because if you kill this tier 2 bottom, it's not gonna be a game changer. No, it's still tier 2 bottom. But do you... Yeah, you actually lost it here. Not, not a wise decision for you to play in the in the bottom tier two. Uh, maybe next time you'll, you'll you'll make the commands in here, like make you know make a drawings. Especially that you just killed their heroes. Go here, you know, make drawing to take Roshan or even like this ping ping like this. It's gonna be helpful. Ah, you you went for the uh, side of vice. Go for troll. Go for jug. You're getting zoned out by these illusions only. My arm slash, by the way. He just used it. What? <laughs> oh, please don't use the tornado. If he is hex, since he is not running that quickly, he is not hasted. Um, just go for hex and then orchid, and then keep on right clicking. Because you just give him a chance to actually escape from here. Because of the hex duration is out. And no scepter. And still died though. I think. But the idea is there. Yeah, the idea is there. Execution of the spells. I mean, for the most part, you, you, you don't really pay that much attention to the spell usage of the enemies. Like what happened in the bottom when the uh, Juggernaut TP'd in your face. He uses the spin immediately, but you don't abuse it. Go orchid him. He got no more. He got no more dispel for himself now. He should die like this. Finally, yeah. Finally, you're you're, you're making better moves now. But what? Tornado. Uh huh. Defeating blast as well. Ah, uh, it's fine. So the game is kind of boring now because oh, what's happening is that it's only skirmishes from left and left to right. Like th there's no big clash that has been happening, and then the objectives that you're taking is not actually that important. Um, it's actually way way better if you play in the Roshan, and then the enemy will be forced to react to it like five versus five engagement, and for sure you'll be able to win the engagement because one. You have the observer, you have the vision, overseeing the situation, and two, th their attack is bombs as well. And you even have the shard, yep. For the uh, triple Mitchell hammer. So yeah, even after getting the kills, you don't abuse it. Like, you don't transition it for the uh, objectives. After getting a kill, you want to get another kill. Which is... Kind of bad thing. This is a common habit of lower MMR players. Like, they really value the kills so much that they're forgetting to get the objectives. And th that's the main difference regarding the Immortal players and the uh, lower MMR players. Because on average, our game doesn't last, or the, our game is over for like laning stage and then the mid game. Um, the average is like 25 minutes to 30 minutes, the duration of our games. It's very rare for us. It's very rare for us to get like 40 minutes, 50 minutes games, or even 60 minutes. Usually it's done around 30 minutes, less than 30 minutes. And I, I'm not sure about the average of your games, but I'm thinking that it's way more than 30 minutes 
based on how you guys play the game it's a very slow paced game like keep on killing just killing but it's not even game winning so I'm going for times 4 in here because it's just going to be um, skirmishes there in there uh huh nice talent Rage of the Fini Blast, Alacrity, um, I would say that Alacrity damage speed is actually much better than the Tornado cooldown. Because if you keep spamming the Tornado, that means the enemy is invulnerable for the duration of your Tornado. And then they will be able to uh, reset things up, you know? So I feel like we are not going to learn anything from here preview based on how the game goes. Like it's just skirmishes after skirmishes. Um, even after getting a kill, let's say the important kills, like Phoenix, because Phoenix is actually one of the uh, strongest hero when it comes to the Roche Pit or defending high ground, aside from Medusa. Um, you guys are not taking advantage of it at all. You just keep on killing people. Like, it doesn't even make sense. Y you killed y you killed someone on top, but you will TP in the bottom, but. That will not transition to, you know, you, you've been chased until here in this area. But it, even if you manage to get a kill in there, you will not be able to take the objectives because the creeps are in here. And then the, the guy that you just killed is respawning. So, yeah. The, the game is so slow and you guys are not abusing those info that they are dead. They don't have spells. Let's kill them. And yeah, this is happening because uh, you delay the game so much and then the Medusa is really strong right now. So the, the question here, um, review, I, I want to know if you have anything in mind. Like do you have any questions for me or you think we missed something in this particular game? I mean, it, it's it's fine that you went for the extra build because it is working out. But the way that you uh, take advantage of every kills that you make is something that is you know, that delayed this game and that made the Medusa this witch. And then you're not able to stand against her now because of your decision making to you know always keep on um, keep on ganking. You know? If you keep on pushing. They cannot defend because they're dead. But you keep ganking and therefore they have the time to respawn and then farm again. Especially for the Medusa. It's a it's a, a ticking time bomb, you know? If you can end the game early, go end it. Why give the enemy some chances? I mean, Troll is definitely stronger than Medusa. But Troll has been strong for quite some time now so why wait for so long why why make it hard if you can finish it like 20 minutes or 10 minutes ago so they bought back this is actually a good win position i think you will fail in here yep the moment that they bought back we should just get out especially you don't have any spells like battle trans bkb so yeah um, since you got it, I'm going to end the uh, replay analysis and then I'm going to um, give you a summary of this game. So yeah, um, let's talk about your laning stage. Um, like what I've mentioned, there's no way that this juggernaut should have this kind of amount of farm, like 5.1, and then you got you even got killed early on. You, you okay? Um, you, you don't fully understand the the matchup, which is clear. But you you need to um you need to realize that you have you have a lot of ways of dealing with this juggernaut. Then juggernaut dealing with you you know he can only spin and then omni slash and then that's it you even have like wex at that point when he omni slash you to death you can actually go for ghost walk in there but you didn't you, you you tend to panic 
and you 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 tend to um you tend to get tilted by by what happened with the stroll. So, um, when it comes to your emotional um stability, you you need to work on it. Like seriously, you you really need to work on your uh, mentality. Because if if you keep playing with this kind of mentality, it's gonna be easy for, for for the enemy to tilt you, and then you know you will commit mistakes after mistakes because you're tilted. You're easy to tilt. You cannot focus on what your hero can do, right? So even if you if it, even if this troll is annoying, even if you're tilt, uh, you know. Like with a vision, you're tilted, you're annoyed by this troll. Mute him. But don't stop about thinking what your hero can do in the game. What your hero can do. It's not an excuse that this guy is toxic, therefore I didn't do this. No, it's not an excuse. I will not accept it. Because in, in your MMR grind, you will always meet people like this troll warlord. You will always meet the, those guys. Okay? Remember that. You will always meet those kind of players. That will rage. That will quit. At the uh, drop of a hat. You know? It, it always happens. But, um... Those guys like me. That were able to go to the immortal. It's just a matter of mental fortitude. Like, even if we are so tilted. Or... We, I could say that we're not easily to tilt. Um, we still think ahead about what we can do about this game. How can we win? Even if we're tilted and such. So, yeah. You, you need to practice the, those things. And again, um, especially the, the most crucial part of it is that um, in the drafting phase, uh, phase itself, you need to ask yourself, like, what am I supposed to do in this game? Um, that's actually crucial when it comes to the skill build of the Invoker. You, you went for the Exert build, which is kind of um, greedy, I could say. But you're actually able to get away with it because they're not punishing you in the first place. Um, also, they have techies, or you guys have techies that were able to kill those cores. Maybe um, they don't have detections that much. That's why they're they're dying on those techies. Yeah, techies actually uh, bought more than them. Which is surprising. So yeah, excerpt build is really greedy. If you play this excerpt build without any proper setups, the enemy will just run run you down. It's gonna be a stump because you're still farming, you're still not ready to fight, but the enemy is already taking the tier three or the the racks of your lane. So you need to be careful about it. It's way too greedy. You can have to fight easily early on. Compared to the Wex build. So you, you need to gauge the, the tempo of the enemy as well. Good thing. Good thing. The enemy is not sticking together. They are not playing objectively as well. Same thing that you did. Like um, you just killed someone in top. You tip it bottom. Trying to chase a kill. And then the one that you killed. You know, just respond and then reset the process again. But there's no objective that has been taken. If and only if. After you get a kill on top lane transition into objectives like Roshan and then go for the high ground and then the guy even if he even if the the guy just respond you're still ahead because there is two lives on one guy so it's like six versus five you know so yeah I think um, when it comes to the itemizations though I don't have much complaint um, it's just the way that you farm your items like my does nine minutes is ver ten minutes is actually real late. Um, the death on you is really costly. I mean, even if no boots, you can actually get away with it because even if Juggernaut will go to um spin you down full health, he won't be able to kill you. Even if you use Omni Slash, um, if you just got the creeps and then Ghost Walk, you're fine as long as he doesn't have detection as well. Um, yeah, Orchid, Boots of Travels. BKB is good. Um, Hex, kind of okay. PLDC. <laughs> so yeah. That's all that I could say preview about your game. Like, focus on those things. Like, skill build. Um, although, with your last hitting, something that you need to work on as well, like, it's very obvious. But it's... 
it's it, it takes practice only. Those uh, last hitting, it's it's way easier to to practice than those things when it comes to the uh, mentality wise. You know, the mentality is much harder than the execution, like right clicking people. You know, last hitting creeps. It's much easier. So yeah, I right, thank you for your time as well. Uh, preview. Uh, I'll wait for your uh for your feedback into the analysis. Let me know if it's helpful or not. Let me know if um you'll be able to have more impact about it. Um yeah, Dota 2 is way way different now than before. It's much much higher on tempo. You're just lucky that the enemy is not abusing those things as well. That the troll died, they don't push. They don't bring sentry with them and then Tekis is killing them. Actually Tekis is the MVP of this game. Tekis actually delight the game so much. Yep. So I, I I'll put up a check mark on your request in here, and then we're going to the move. Uh, we're going to the next requestor. Thank you again for 